All right, so welcome to today's analysis. Today is Thursday, the 16th of February, 2017. Uh, and it is 13.04 here in the UK. You're looking at a, you're looking at a uh, New Zealand USD 12 hour chart. Sorry, uh, I just spaced out there for a second. You're looking at a New Zealand USD 12 hour chart. Important reason why this chart is showing right now as opposed to any other chart because it's a potential trade here and it's uh, looking like it might trigger very soon. So I wanna keep a close eye on this one. Uh, wait, I just wanna check something real quick. Uh, I think we have some important USD news coming out. Yeah, we do I have some kind of important USD news coming out now. Uh, well, not now, in 25 minutes. So I wanna see how that one plays out. Uh, I'll probably enter this trade even if uh, it's pushed down by news. I'm pretty sure I will. Uh, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll discuss this trade real quick, uh, this potential trade real quick. And uh, then we'll get on with the rest of the analysis. So this is um, a continuation reversal. Basically what's happening here is price is starting to trend down, pushed up here. I'm looking for a reversal of this bullish move here but it's a continuation of the overall trend. Uh, well, the overall trend that I think has started, but you know, really has the trend really started? Who knows? Uh, but I, I think this is uh, the start of a very nice bearish trend. So I'm calling this a continuation reversal. And also, I mean, if you really wanna, wanna do trend lines, and I, I don't do trend lines, even though I've done them in the last two videos, this one and uh, and uh, yesterday's, I don't do trend lines, but yeah, okay, that's kind of like, you know, hinting that overall we're getting a, a downwards trend. Maybe if we were to switch to the weekly, it would look pretty, yeah, kind of downwards there. Not as much as I was thinking, but anyway, point is, I think this is a continuation reversal setup and I think that uh, New Zealand USD is somewhat trending down right now. So high probability setup, 1.8 risk reward ratio, looking good. I'm probably gonna enter this one if it pushes down. Uh, any questions? Any questions about this setup? Target is uh, 0 0.7145 roughly. Might change that, might change the entry. Oh, actually I've already changed the entry, technically speaking. Uh, entry is, I can't remember what I set, something like that anyway. Yeah, the stop's a bit tight, but this kind of setup, uh, generally speaking, uh, has pretty good potential. And to be honest, I haven't actually set my stop yet. I've set a uh, kind of basic throw in the stop without really considering much because the trade's not even close to triggering. Um, when it comes time to actually enter this trade, I'm going to take a proper look at my stop loss and target. This is usually the way I do things. If I don't have the time to set a proper stop loss and target, I'll just throw this up and I'll say, okay, this trade looks good. And then when it comes time to enter, I'll, I'll adjust things. So these are by no means definitive stops and targets. It's just what I have for now. Suffice to say that the risk to reward ratio is fine on this trade and Should this area be here? I think it should, really. I'm gonna pull that area down. Not that it matters anyway, because I'm gonna take this trade anyway, but I think I'm gonna pull that area down. More in line with the recent bounces. I think I'm gonna adjust my support resistance areas tonight. Uh, my support resistance areas have not been updated in a little while. And I think it's starting to show. This is also a valid setup on the daily if this indecision candle closes as is. But 
to be honest, I don't want to wait for the daily. I did that yesterday and it meant that I missed some trades. And uh, this one looks pretty good on the 12 hours so no real reason to wait on the daily to be honest. Stop is inside my resistance. No, it's not. It's not at all inside my resistance. I swear, I'm going to stop using these shaded areas. It just confuses everyone. The shaded area doesn't mean anything. You could use your support resistance areas just like this. Just a single line. I just have the shaded area there because it looks better to me. It, it's hard for me to to look at a support resistance area and visualize it as an area when it's just a line. So what I do just to help me, help myself more quickly and efficiently do my analysis is I put a shaded area around it. The exact size of that shaded area doesn't mean anything. It could be this or it could be this. It doesn't mean anything. It's just a visual thing for me because it makes it easier for me to tell if if a indecision candle is in the vicinity of that line without it it's just a bit hard for me to tell so when i'm doing my analysis i have to stop and take a closer look which is just a complete waste of time the the shaded area is just a visual aid for me it it represents nothing beyond that support resistance is a zone but you can't calculate that zone and then place a shaded area around it. You just can't. There's no way to properly calculate the zone. And you know, maybe that's not true. Maybe you could, on some occasions, depending on how it has formed, you could calculate a zone because a lot of the times you place support resistance at areas where it ranges. So your zone could be at the top and bottom of the range when you place your support resistance area. But number one, that doesn't really mean that much. And number two, if you wanna spend like 12 hours trying to calculate the exact range of support resistance on all of your pairs that you're trading just go ahead feel free but i really don't see the point this is support resistance it's just general lines where price is bouncing from um or general areas where price is bouncing from you could throw them up just as lines if you want but personally i prefer to just have this little blue shaded area because it makes it easier for me to see what's going on. So this stop loss is above the high of the indecision candle. And this indecision candle is pretty high up in the, in the resistance area, even when my resistance area was further up there, wherever it was, it was it's still pretty high up in the resistance area. So I'm fine with that stop loss there, although I might extend that it. it might be a bit tight. We'll just see what happens uh, as price gets closer and as I do my final risk assessment for this setup. Does that answer those questions? I really think I might just remove that shaded area. It's been years where I get this question and I answer it and then like a few days later I get it again. And I, I completely understand why people ask it and why people get confused by it. But I'm starting to think it would just be easier for me to remove the shaded area. But for now, for right now, I'm just going to keep them back up because it would feel so weird looking at my charts without it. Any other questions or can we go on to Euro AUD and do some more analysis? I think Danny was typing, so I think it was Danny or Dave or someone with a D was typing. Uh, like I said, I haven't really decided yet. Uh, 
I don't want to spend time doing my risk assessment right now because it's going to take like five, 10 minutes and then we're going to, the video is just going to drag on for five, 10 minutes of me doing my risk assessment. I haven't decided on my actual exact entry price. Um, but I don't think that the suggested price I had gives you bad risk to reward ratio at all. You still have good risk to reward ratio. I mean, ideally I'd want to exit around about this area here, but it's a continuation reversal. So, you know, you can't get into this one without, without, uh, anticipating a break of this stuff here. Continuation reversal. You're looking for a continuation. While you might have to contend with some minor support resistance there, you have the fact that the trend is on your side to, to back you up. If you were doing a points-based system, right? To assess the viability of this trade, you would minus points for this saying, okay, let's just say minus one points because there's minor support resistance in the way, but it would get plus two points because it's in line with the trend. So that would give you positive, uh, positive points. Therefore you can take the trade. Whereas with a normal reversal trade, it, the reason we, we uh, want to skip trades that have like this major kind of messy support resistance, uh, minor support resistance in the way is because when you're doing a risk assessment there, that gives you a minus one. And then the fact that it's not in line with the trend gives you a zero or it also gives you a minus one, which takes away from the viability of the trade. So the risk reward on this one is fine. Don't focus that much on the messing that's through here. Not 100% sure on the entry, but it's going to be something like this. This is roughly how I plan to take the trade. There's plenty of room here for risk reward. Plenty of room. You could definitely at least get a 1.8 here. Um, possibly more. Even 1.9 almost. Uh, any more questions about this? set up hmm. all right no more questions let's move on to euro AUD what's going on with euro AUD it's uh it reversed reversed uh from that support area we were talking about yesterday uh I wasn't that interested in taking this trade yesterday because uh, I, I hadn't really uh, adjusted my support resistance areas for quite some time. I adjusted them after the webinar. I saw this forming, but I wasn't really that interested in taking it anyway. It looks like it's pushed up, but it wouldn't have hit target yet. And, uh, you know, it might end up hitting target, but I didn't take this yesterday and there's nothing forming on here right now. So yeah, nothing happening there. ADJPY, what's up with ADJPY? It's above resistance. USDCHF, what is going on? USDCHF, oh yeah, that trade we talked about yesterday. That thing is doing well. I didn't take it. I didn't take it. Ah, uh, well, but I followed my rules, to be honest. The risk to reward ratio on this one was just it looked good or well, it looked okay when we looked at it yesterday. Um, but by the time it closed, the risk reward ratio just got pretty horrible. This wasn't worth it. If you're in this trade, is anyone in this trade? Someone posted it to the forum. I know at least one person entered.
So why do you guys enter with such a horrible risk reward ratio? I have to ask. It doesn't really matter how low your support is. It doesn't change the fact that this candle itself has a bad risk to reward ratio. Oh wait, do you mean this support here? Sorry, I completely misunderstood what you meant. My bad, my bad. Uh, well, yeah, I guess. I guess if you want to play it that way. Be honest, though. Did you just, like... Did you look at this and say it has bad RR and then go, mm, maybe if I pull my stop, my uh, support down to here... I can justify entering this trade. Because I'd say regardless of adjusting that, that uh, support area, there's still a very good chance that you're going to find some strong support there. This one, this one breakout below and then push back up it isn't really enough for me to... Or just a, a support area. It just looks like an, an, an anomaly. Alright, anyway. doesn't matter. Uh, I'm not in the trade. Uh, to those of you who are. At this point you may as well hold it. Because you're in the trade. So you may as well just go for it. Uh, it is moving nicely. Uh, I mean, it was quite clear what was happening. I just didn't have a safe... Uh, stop an entry so I, did, I skipped it because of that uh, same situation with euro usd yesterday i was looking for a potential reversal but sadly the reversal just didn't really happen on the 12 hour like i was wanting um i was looking for this candle here to give me a reversal but it, it reversed too quick uh and it's headed up now is anyone in this one Yeah, I agree. I couldn't find a good entry either. So no one's in this one. Fair enough. And this one wasn't as bad though. I mean, you could, technically speaking, have kind of justified entering this one. It's not as bad as US DCHF is what I'm saying. If you got in right at a break, you know, you're 1.4 to the next resistance area. So you, you could have done something like that and targeted inside that resistance area. Not something I would do, but this one this one had a bit more potential than USDCHF, but I, I still didn't take it. All right, uh, USDJPY, what's going on there? Nothing much. ADCAD, what's going on here? Nothing much. AUD USD, same as AUD CAD, it's broken above, but nothing much really going on. CAD JPY. Yeah, nothing much. AUD New Zealand in between two support resistance areas. Next, Euro CAD. Euro CAD is a. Uh, Still doing its thing down here, but no potential trade for me. We discussed this one yesterday. I don't want to go over the same thing again. Uh, Euro JP in between two areas. Euro JPY. 
stuck on resistance. Euro New Zealand. Yeah. Stuck on resistance, I guess. What would you call that? Just messy. No, no, no potential setup is what I would call it, really. GPAUD had a nice little reversal yesterday on the four hour and eight hour. Did anyone enter that? It was better on the eight hour, really. Anyone enter? GPAUD, cute little long. Well, not yesterday, technically. This morning, very early. No one entered? All right, cool. Well, not cool, but no reason to talk about it then. GP, JPY is in between two support resistance areas. GP, New Zealand, nothing there. I'm not going to trade that pair. Uh, um, yeah, GP, USD. New Zealand cards in between two support resistance areas. Not much going on today, is there? It's been a pretty boring week, really. Following up from a few very good weeks, you get a few, well, no, one very boring week. That's how it goes in trading. Get really, really good weeks, and then you get boredom. But that being said, we do have a setup on New Zealand USD. Uh, it is pushing down. Um, We've got we've got like a few minutes. So let's let's do some. I'm not going to do a full on risk assessment on this, but let us see where we would place our entry and stop. Since uh, it sounds like you guys are dying to know. All right, so uh, I want a good risk reward ratio, as always. That is my goal when I'm entering a trade. Good risk reward ratio because good risk reward ratio over time means that you're more profitable um well if you have if you actually win trades um because you could also just like you know set your target down here and then you have like crazy risk reward ratio four four point three and then uh you never you never win the trade so um you won't be more profitable over time um but you guys know what i mean so I want a good risk reward ratio. Uh, I'm looking to the left. First thing I see to the left is this messiness there. See some messiness through here. Am I that worried about this stuff? Eh, I'm more worried about this really. This stuff here, it's just part of the continuation setup. It looks like price is trending down overall. If it starts moving down here, it would confirm to me that price is trending down. Um, so yeah, it looks like we're just in a downtrend right now. And I'm not going to worry too much about that first bit of um, messiness there. You know, worst case scenario, what's going to happen? Price is going to come down to here and it's going to get stuck here uh, for a while. Well, no, that's not the worst case scenario. That's one of the scenarios. Price gets stuck there for a while. If it does that and there's no signs that it's continuing down, I might just close this one out early because after like, let's say, four or five 12 hour candles, I'm just going to say, no, not interested anymore. Uh, maybe even less less uh maybe even less 12 hour candles um so i'm not too concerned about this this is just part of the overall continuation setup uh any good continuation setup is going to break below that mess there so this is a continuation reversal it's not something that i have been trading for for long it's something that i experimented with i experimented more and more with it and um, I, I found it to be profitable. So now it's been added uh, to my strategy and it's been added to the course videos. If you take a look, uh, continuation reversals are something that I now trade. So yeah, this mess here, I'm not too worried about it. But at the same time, it doesn't mean that I lack all respect for it. Is respect the right word? It doesn't mean that I don't fear it. No, that's not the right word either. It doesn't mean that I'm not concerned. I think that's the way to say it. It doesn't mean I'm not concerned about that. Yes, I am concerned, 
but it just would not make any sense to completely avoid it. Uh, so that gives me some leeway with my target. So where's my entry going to be? I'm thinking I want to see a bit of a break uh, below the most recent low. It is a 12 hour low, so it does have some significance. 6 hour is happening right now that break but I don't want to I don't want to trade a break at the 6 hour 12 hour low all right below the 12 hour low and when we when we trade a break of an indecision candle you don't want to put your your entry like right at the tip because that's not really a break is it this is starting to move um you want to place it a tad lower 7 yeah, that's about three pips lower. I think I'm going to settle for entry price at 72.06. Stop loss. And it's a pretty big candle, really. So I think my stop loss is fine, just a little bit up here. Um, it's a pretty big candle. Price action based stop above the most recent high. If price pushes above that high, I probably don't want to be in this trade still. If you look to the left, the most recent uh, time it reversed from this area, it didn't really get much higher. I know it did over here, but that's going back quite, quite a ways. Uh, here, it didn't get much higher. Here also didn't get much higher. So it's a pretty good, pretty good stop. Okay, yep, stop, target sorted. Um, all right, let's just do minimum target for now at 1.5. Target is gonna be somewhat open on this because it's a continuation reversal. I wanna see how it reacts when it gets to this area. Uh, wait, I actually need to enter this. I'll do it on my phone, one sec. I need to enter the I need to enter, enter a pending order real quick. Seven two oh six. Uh, stop loss. Stop loss. Sorry for for stopping talking. I'm just. Uh, I'll be done in a second. I just. God damn it! Stop moving down. I want to finish this actual okay our target will set later okay all right cool yeah wait let me just double check this 206 it's important to double check after you you set a pending yeah okay when you don't double check you make mistakes i uh experienced that a few weeks ago uh, i think it was a gp usd short i think you were in that one ash you uh mentioned it on the forum and i jumped in too but i had to exit early because i messed it all up because i got in way 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 too late Yeah, well, that's what happens when you don't, when you don't double check. News is out, it's pulling it back up. That's absolutely fine. Um, or it's, or was the news pushing it down and now it's pulling back up? Who knows? doesn't matter. That's absolutely fine. All right, so I've got my entry set now. Uh, if it starts pushing down again, it will trigger me in. Uh, so, uh, yeah, what was I saying? I can't remember what I was saying before this. I got distracted by the trade almost triggering. Yeah, okay, so my stop loss is up there. My target is here. Uh, sorry, my entry is here at the 7206. I don't wanna jump in, you know, right at the break of the low. I wanna give it a few pips. The goal with an entry is to 
is to confirm that sellers have taken control of price. Now, in this case, it, it's a bit tricky to confirm that sellers have taken control of price. Ideally, sellers taking control of price, you'd want a, a lower entry to confirm they've actually taken control. But sometimes you have to kind of blur the lines uh, with that because, you know, it, it's just not realistic to wait for it to drop down so far. Um, so, yeah, you are risking a little bit more by entering here at 7206. You're risking a little bit more. It's a slightly riskier entry, but overall it's uh, it's an okay entry. Yeah, so that's how I'm planning right now on taking this. I haven't really done proper risk assessment on this trade, so depending on what I really shouldn't be in, but I've gone through the risk assessment in my head and I'm pretty sure this is a trade I would take, but uh, I'm probably gonna end this webinar right now, to be honest, so I can go and do some proper risk assessment and cancel this pending order if needed. But I would say there's a 99% chance that it's not gonna be canceled. But uh, you know, you really shouldn't, shouldn't trade without doing uh, your risk assessment. Would I hold it over the weekend? Eh, I don't know, ask me tomorrow. It depends. There's no cover all answer to these kinds of questions, Nelson. Um, let's say price is still here tomorrow. Let's say I enter this trade, right? Triggers me and bam, price comes back up to here. All day tomorrow, it just dances around here doing nothing. Would I hold this over the weekend? Probably not. I'd probably say, screw it. I'm going to get out as close to my entry as I can and just be out of the trade. What, what if I get triggered in and price drops down to here? and starts moving around there, but it doesn't quite hit my target. At that point, <coughs> I might say, okay, I'll leave it open because it's moving down nicely um, and there's a good chance it's gonna hit my target next uh, next week. What if price moves down to here and it's like within five pips of my target and the weekend's coming up? I might just say, screw it, I'm just gonna close this trade. It's five pips away from my target, close enough. Yeah, close enough generally isn't good enough in trading, but let's just say, you know, sometimes I'm willing to say close enough and just jump out. What if price is sitting here? Then I'd probably, I'd probably close out with some profit uh, or I might hold it. it. It just depends. There's so many different situations. There's no one size fits all answer that you could give to a question like that. It depends on the setup itself. Every setup is unique. It depends what happens. It depends what news is coming out on Monday. It depends what news is happening this weekend. Do we have like a, a G whatever summit this weekend? I don't know, probably not, but let's have a look. What's going on this weekend on the calendar? Uh, Saturday, nothing. Sunday, nothing really. We have New Zealand PPI input on Sunday uh, evening. So yeah, probably not, no real news affecting it this weekend. I hope that answers your question. I mean, it's not a very useful answer, me saying, I don't know what I'm gonna do, but it's the truth. You, you can't really decide these things uh, 48 hours ahead of time, rather 24 hours because it is Thursday, so. No, it's not gut feeling. It just depends on the data at the time. It depends what happens at the time. If price, pushes down, I might take that profit. If, uh, it just depends, it depends. Any other questions, guys? Quick few more questions, if there are any. Very, very quick few more questions uh, because I kind of want to, I want to get to, uh, to doing the risk analysis on this trade to make sure if it's something I actually want to trade. But I, I am happy to answer a few more questions. If there are any. Uh, does the New Zealand PPI on Sunday bother you if you hold over the weekend? Uh, it's something to consider. Again, it depends. Uh, the New Zealand PPI is something to consider. 
but let's say if price closes pretty much where it is right now, if I get triggered in and price closes above my target, uh, above my entry, I probably won't hold over this weekend because of that PPI. Because I don't want, as soon as the market opens on Sunday, for the PPI to come out and drive price up. If price is down here, fair way into my target, and I decide not to close out, um, or I decide I want to keep the trade open, I probably will. Because worst case scenario, what's going to happen? The PPI is going to come out, it's going to drive price up, um, and then I'll just close out at my entry. Again, it's uh, dependent. Uh, but it, it is definitely something to, to be concerned about the PPI, uh, the PPI report on Sunday, wherever it is, I can't find it anymore. I closed it, but yeah, there's a New Zealand PPI report on Sunday. All right, guys, uh, I am going to call an end to this analysis. I wish I could stay around longer, but trading takes precedence over over webinars um i'm already going against my trading plan right now by putting in a pending order without doing proper risk analysis because i don't want to miss this trade i'm already going against my trading plan which is very very bad and you because you're depending if you're a profitable trader yeah if you're a profitable trader do whatever you want but you if you're not a profitable trader you should never ever trade against your trading plan uh, and uh, this is one of those cases of do as I say, not as I do, which I kind of hate when people do that. But please, uh, please understand that in this specific scenario, I'm in the webinar, so I couldn't do everything I needed to do. So it's a very rare case for me to do something like this, but I am doing it now. Um, so yeah, I'm going to call an end to this webinar. I'm going to do the risk analysis. I'm going to confirm that this is a trade I want to be in. And if it is, uh, I'll uh, respond on the forum saying that I'm still in. 99% sure that I'm going to stay in this trade. Or, well, sorry, I'm not in the trade, but stay in with my pending order is what I mean. I'm going to keep my pending order uh, live, 99% sure. So yeah, I'll see you guys on the forum. See you later.